Hello everyone, and welcome to another episode of Yellow Alert, where we read out the dev posts over the past week, so you don't have to. Okay, so first up we had a post from Delta Lambda, and it says UI slash spaceship HUDs truncate distance to target. Hello devs. We are dealing with enormous distances when playing in a star system in this game. Distances go up to multiple millions of kilometers and that significantly increases the noise on the HUD and clogs a player's view when in flight. Here is what I mean using an exemplary marker. And there's basically an image there, 31 million kilometers away, Cheng's last known position. Uh, and he says, why don't you truncate the kilometer number to show 31.9 million kilometers? Um, he gives some examples here. Uh, given this example, instead of 31, 9,800, 165, etc., uh, once the distance reaches four figures, as for example, a distance smaller than 9,999 kilometers, you can then show the full remaining distance to target again. Impaired visibility stands particularly true when multiple markers are overlapping, such a mission marker and quantum jump marker. On a side note, radar ping in ships should only reveal signatures but not clog the HUD with mining nodes in order to prevent the UI from being overpopulated by irrelevant information in, say, a combat situation. We had a response from Orphorius from CIG, and he says, Hi there. Uh, we are already aware of this silliness. Uh, I personally noted it and wrote the task to change this myself because I noted that mission markers differ in how they show distance compared to other markers. Unfortunately, I can't say when it will get done, as with all things, it's about priorities, and right now this is low priority because it's still functional. Uh, it will get done at some point as a quality of life fix whenever we can fit it in the schedule. So basically, at some point one day, they'll fix it. Cool, so next up we had a post from Oath Stalker, and it says, please help with the new problem in Roto's mission box. Uh, hello there. The Roto's box mission is broken in a new way. Might some good souls please contribute to the issue council? And he has linked to the issue council report there. Uh, here is a problem. With the new jump town building, the box is now spawn in unreachable places. If it's unreachable, that means that people doing the mission cannot retrieve the boxes anymore. So one cannot complete the mission. Please help us get this bug reported. Uh, there is also this contribution which only lack five contribution. Pretty please. Um, and there is another issue council there. Uh, so we had another response from uh, Orphorius from CIG, and he says, Hi, Oathstalker. I spotted this internally after 3.16 went out. I believe it was fixed internally today. Said fix will come in a future patch. So, uh, yeah, that's hopefully pretty imminent. Cool, so next up we had a post from Online? Online? Something like that. And it says, Star Map Rework. Adjusting priorities? Question mark. Uh, I understand the devs have acknowledged a rework of the star map and migrating it from Flash to the new building block tech, uh, but I am concerned of when this rework will occur or if the star map will get priority hotfixes for its various issues. The in-game star map seems to become more uh, of an issue each patch, including but not limited to the following issues. Very difficult to use for marking waypoint locations for quantum travel. The star map frequently is not displayed when immediately opening the Moby Glass. Setting a new waypoint is not always registered with quantum waypoints outside of the star map, causing players to need to clear and reset points several times. And zoom levels are inconsistent depending on camera angle, making it difficult to click some locations. While several of the above issues have known workarounds, this could be deterring and overwhelming to new players uh, trying to learn the game. I hope priority is considered for a star map rework or hotfixes for its mechanics. I don't intend to stir up controversy of what other game mechanics should have priority over others, but I'm concerned on the star map if it doesn't get some attention soon. We actually had a response from um, Jake Acapella from CRG, and he says, Hi, online, online or online? Who knows? The star map is currently undergoing an overhaul as we speak. Search for map and radar system rework on the progress tracker. We also discussed this a bit on the UI episode of Star Season Live, timestamped for your reference here, and there is a link to the YouTube video. Um, there was a response from Phoenix, it says, Hey Jake, according to the progress tracker, it looks like the work is done. 
but from the um, Star Citizen Live it sounded like there is still quite a bit of work to be done and there are other game mechanics that go along with it. So can you elaborate if there is any other work on the map or radar system rework that is not yet in progress tracker or should we expect to see the finished system unveiled in the near future? And Jake come back and said, hi Phoenix. Um, and this is also in response to uh, Aquino and Kajasi. Uh, the UI team is a downstream team, so their schedule is only made for the current quarter. As of our last publish in December, the Q1 schedule hadn't been completed as of yet. We'll have this quarter's schedule on the progress tracker with our next update. Also keep in mind, just because a deliverable on progress tracker ends does not mean the work is complete necessarily. So there you go. Oh, next up we had a post from Kenji84 and it says Jared possibly confirmed refueling delay. Um, they are looking at where they can add the Starfarer internal update pass in the schedule. At the very least a 3.17.1 patch. Get ready for the speculation train for the 26th. One week down, 12 days to go. Hey, where's that monthly report? Question mark? Uh, so we had a response from Zylo and he says, of course, things can still change as we approach go, no go reviews, but I want to share that refueling is currently still on track for 3.17. So there you go, 3.17 it is, uh, until it isn't. Okay, so last up, uh, we've got a post from uh, Rafaim, Rafaim, something or other. And it says, and this is a big one, this is a, this, we're getting a lot of traction on this one in our Discord, banned for stream sniping. Uh, for those of us who like to engage in non-consensual PvP, and that is the best term I've heard in a long time, uh, I'm sure you've been accused of stream sniping. Have you also been threatened with being banned because you've streamed sniped? Um, I've heard this rumour a few times with other PvPers, but I can't find it in the terms of service, and he links the terms of service there. Uh, can we get banned for killing a Twitcher? Okay, let's say stream sniping is a bannable offence, as some people have claimed. What happens if said Twitcher reports you for stream sniping, but you don't watch Twitch at all because you're a boomer, so you have no idea you just sniped a stream? If you happen to kill a Twitcher, should you get banned? Also, streaming in itself is essentially offering up intel. Should someone be banned if they looked up a Twitcher's account, watched that Twitcher twitching, and then just decided to combine game loops? Need clarification, asking for a friend which is quite hilarious there's a few there's a couple of funny memes um which are always funny um and then we had a response from Ulf at cig and he says hi Rafaim. um we laid out the rules some time ago in this thread over in the announcements section and he links it um it's to excessive griefing stream sniping um as we said before pvp is fine but if someone exploits live streams or other mediums to harass another player in game we will investigate and intervene where it's warranted and no, we don't take action against accounts just because they're getting called out by a streamer, but we will launch an investigation to see if the rules were broken. So now, I would normally end there, but there is actually a response from Rabid Crabs, which again is a great name, um, but it, 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 I think it's well put, so I'm going to read this out to you. So it says, the rules are poorly written and easily interpreted in any way that serves CRG's interests at that point in time. This is why people frequently wonder about these rules. The exact words from Xylo, at CIG. However, there is a line that is occasionally crossed where players are going outside the bounds of immersing themselves as a pirate slash PvPer. Some users are going out of their way to leverage live streams and other mediums to excessively grief. In many of these cases, it's no longer about enjoying the game, but rather disrupting it. Stream sniping, pad ramming, firing into armistice zones, or utilising various exploits to grief others. These are just a few examples of excessive griefing, which uh, we do not tolerate. So he says, uh, what is meant by the phrase excessively griefing? The word excessively leads me to believe that there is no line drawn in the sand, but rather it is a fully up to CIG's discretion to freely interpret where the rules are drawn and what crossing the line looks like at that singular point in time. It appears this could be a moving goalpost or have a fair amount of RNG involved in its determination. Difficult to follow the rules if they are intentionally written in ambiguous ways. Uh, let's remember, as far as I know, the words stream sniping do not exist in the terms of service. The definition of the rules as shared by CIG in the above quote also lists firing into armistice zones as a punishable offence considered griefing, but CIG has literally changed the game mechanics over the last year to allow us to shoot into armistice zones. A final thought for you, skelting at CIG, this statement also includes utilising various exploits to grief others. However, 
it appears CRG takes a hands-off approach in classifying bugs or issues as exploits, so it makes the inclusion of this statement in CRG's interpretation of the rules almost completely valueless. Here are some examples of known exploits that are used to grief players and have gone unacknowledged by CRG for long periods of time. Calling someone in-game reveals their position on the map. Uh, there is a issue council report there, um, and this uh, has been was first reported on the April the 12th, 2021. Um, that's 276 days ago. Marked as critical. Nothing done. Uh, phase through doors, walls, and ships with the slash dance two emote. Um, so essentially, what um, our friend here is trying to say is that the the rules for stream sniping are too vague and up to interpretation by CIG so you don't actually you can't actually read something and say oh it appears I've stream sniped or no I'm good there is no way to determine that it's only determined by CIG after they have a look and think ah well he was a big streamer so we better just call it stream sniping um, we did discuss this a while back and I'm going to give you my opinions now um, if I decide to take my gameplay put it out onto the internet for people to watch live and that game has PvP involved in it, then I am opening myself up to stream sniping, and there should be no way for a game to determine whether you were stream sniped or not. The only way that they can do that is by knowing that the other player was watching your stream, and there is no way to prove that. So it wouldn't hold up in a court of law. Um, it's bollocks, basically. If you stream your content to the public and they come for you, that is your own fault. Um, we've been stream sniped before, we're pretty confident, but, eh, you know, I die so often anyway, it doesn't really matter if it's someone who knows where I am, or just happened upon me and killed me. You know, it's, stream sniping is, I think, it, it, it's one of those things that you have to just take on the chin if you're a streamer. Um, you know, if you're streaming to hundreds of people, thousands of people, one or two of those people are going to think, eh, this will be funny. So, um, yeah, I think it's, it's a really stupid argument to have. Um, and I think that streamers are getting out of their pram over something that they can fix. Don't stream, basically. Um, you know, if you're going to do PvP content, then fair enough, go and do some PvP content on your own. If you're going to do some mining, if someone comes and just rat keeps killing you over and over again while you're mining, they're dicks. Are they griefers? Don't know. Can't see their screen. It is so complex. So, um, yeah, I can understand why, why streamers are getting out of their pram because it's annoying to keep get killed over and over again but unless you can prove it I think you're just gonna have to suck it up but I think the long and the short of this is yes PSA people you can get banned for stream sniping so unless you can you know live with that maybe just don't do it I think CRG are always gonna side with big streamers because at the end of the day they're advertising their game so yeah be careful people it's a dangerous world out there Anyway, that is it for this week. Um, we hope you liked it. I hope you found it informative or amusing. And if you did like it, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe for more Star Season content. Uh, and don't forget to jump into that comment section and let me know what you thought on these posts. Uh, please be gentle. Um, that's just my opinion on stream sniping. I'm pretty sure there'll be some streamers that decide that I'm wrong. Um, but we'll see. Um, and uh, yeah, don't forget, if you can, come and join us on a Thursday. Watch our stream. Feel free to stream snipe us. We're not going to tell anyone. Um, but yeah, I think that's pretty much it. So uh, thanks very much, everyone, for joining us. We'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.